Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about refugee policy. But to do this, first I need to talk about risk. So a really big and important part of science is calculating the chance of an error. We call this risk. The risk that a vaccine will cause a reaction, the risk that a hoverboard will blow up, the risk that an obese person will have a heart attack. We can measure these risks and work out what's going on. Risk is different from uncertainty in that it can be measurable. I can tell you with near certainty that your measles vaccine has a less than a one in a million risk of a serious complication. I can tell you that there's a roughly one in 10,000 chance that a hoverboard you got for Christmas will blow up and that the average American has a one in 214 risk of a heart attack this year and that that risk goes up if you're overweight. Then we have a thing called acceptable risk because risk is everywhere. We have risks that we're willing to accept. For example, many retailers like Amazon have decided that that one in 10,000 risk of a hoverboard blowing up is too high and so they've stopped selling them. But many obese people are willing to accept the high risk of heart attack because they just love food. I feel you. A hoverboard blowing up is an example of a type two error when we think something is safe, but it's not. We have underestimated the risk. Examples of type two errors are like a nuclear power plant exploding or a plane crashing or a person getting food poisoning, all errors when something that should have been safe turns out to be unsafe. But it gets impossible to eliminate all risk of bad things happening because then we experience the opposite problem called a type one error. Say you're the manufacturing company of hoverboards. You wanna sell lots of hoverboards and so you need your hoverboards to be safe. You want to avoid type two errors like your hoverboard exploding. So you put in various safety measures like safer batteries that can't overcharge and plastic coating charging cables that don't catch on fire. If you wanna make your hoverboards even safer, you could invest in like super safe batteries or thicker plastic coating or thermal fireproof blankets. But for every new feature you add, your hoverboard gets more expensive and heavier and eventually they get so expensive and so heavy that no one will buy them. This is a type one error when we overestimate risk and it ends up costing us. The best we can hope for is a nice balance between type one risks and type two risks. Hoverboards that are safe enough that we accept the risk without the risk being zero. We do this all the time. For example, planes that are safe enough and still cheap enough that we still fly even if one or two planes crash. So you might be asking yourself, why all the explanation about risk if you really wanted to talk about refugees? Well, we've had a lot of politicians recently who seem to think that the risk of accepting Syrian refugees is an unacceptable one and that it would be preferable to let Syrians die at the hands of ISIS than put American people at risk. But like all risk, we can actually measure the risk associated with refugees. So far, there's been about 745,000 refugees admitted to the United States, and so far, exactly zero have successfully completed acts of domestic terrorism. Two have been convicted of buying guns, but they weren't for use against US citizens. They would have shipped to Iran because apparently it's cheaper and easier to buy a gun in the United States than in the Middle East, where there's a war. Some, like Mohammed Osman Mahmoud, were planning to carry out acts of terrorism, but were caught by the FBI. So I don't think the risk here is zero, but if we are super conservative and include even failed terrorist attacks and lone wolves and basically every refugee that's ever been charged with a terror-related crime, no matter who it's aimed at, you're only looking at a maximum of seven people out of 745,000. That means that only one in 100,000 refugees is a risk of becoming a threat to the United States. Refugees are different from the regular population too, in that you're in a position to put risk limits in place, such as only accepting Christians, or only accepting children, or only accepting women and children, or only accepting Syrians who are 100% verifiable and have the right paperwork, and limiting refugees' abilities to bring in family members. So I think when we're having a debate about refugee policy, we understand that the risk of refugees becoming terrorists isn't zero, but it's also not very high. And we have to balance what we consider to be an acceptable risk to the American public with our duty as an international member of the world community and a leader in world affairs. America also isn't known for shying away from risk. We're willing to put members of our population on the line and let them lose their life in order to defend things that we believe in. So when it comes to refugee policy, it's important to remember that whilst the risk isn't zero, there is an acceptable risk that we should be willing to take on. 
links to all the sources that we've used in this video are in the description below, so check them out. I find accident theory and risk theory absolutely fascinating, along with refugee policy. I'd also love to know what you guys think. Are you surprised at how low risk refugees are? And are you willing to accept that one in 100,000 risk? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.